So there are four people that are the reason Kyrie is standing here today. I really didn't know who Kyrie was. <laughs> However, my good friend Jennifer Robinson, who's the head of Fem City, she was like, oh, he's awesome. You know, you should ask him. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've never heard of him. So I'm like, next. <laughs> Denise was like, oh, you know, do you know that Kyrie Terrell? He's like one amazing guy. I was like, mm. thanks. And then the icing on the cake, though, is my beloved Huey Dillon, who of course won't even sit next to me today. <laughs> uh, he actually changed to C. I was like, whoa, okay. But anyway, Huey was the icing on the cake because honestly, I've known Huey nine years and even though I'm sure I give him a hard time throughout the nine years, I respect him so much and he was like, Kyrie Zip, he is like the one you want. And so when Huey tells me that, it's done. So thank you to the three of you. And Zach, raise your hand, Zach. His hand's raised. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> He's all good. We're at, the news took me to a Thuzio event, and so I got to meet Zach. And what did Zach say to me? I told you this earlier. If you don't get him now, what did I tell you, Zach? I don't even know Exactly. So here he is in the live. So here you are. Oh man. Oh. Okay. Oh man. They're doing up real big for you and, and Yang Ming when you when you with Michelle Leonard and the folks. I can't thank the people enough who, who spoke me up up enough to be here. Um, they asked me, was I nervous? I get excited. I don't get nervous. It's literally the same exact energy. Right. So obviously my charity of choice, I'll tell you guys about that a little bit first. I'll tell you a little bit about me and I'm saying a little bit because I do mean a little bit. And then I'll go into what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight or to this afternoon. Um, so Delta Community Supports is near and dear to me. I was just telling Carmen, it's crazy how things happen because I went to speak at Pico and the woman who connected me at Pico, uh, her sister is... Uh, Pat, where's Pat at? She, she's still in here, right? Pat in the back, yeah. So after they heard me speak, she said, well, my sister's a part of this program that handles youth. You need to speak to the youth. I said, sure, give my email. Pat emailed me, and it came back with Delta Community Supports on it, right? So I'm 36 now. 15 years ago, I left the Delta program at 21. And as soon as I saw that name, I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm involved. I'm, I'm not just going to speak. I'm going to become involved. Because if not for them, I mean, I might not be here right now to speak to you guys today. So they'll always be my number one charity that comes up, right? And the reason I was in Delta Community Supports and what they do is I was an emancipated youth out of the foster care system. So a lot of people don't realize when you turn 17, there's nobody that wants to take care of you anymore, right? But you still need care. That's one of the things that Delta provides. So they put you in an apartment. But the thing about being in an apartment is it comes with expenses, right? Um, and some of the things that we take for granted, a phone, a laptop, those types of things, I just delivered a young lady a dresser. She didn't have a dresser, right? So that's why this is my charity, and I'll talk more about how you, you guys can get involved with our drive to help them. Um, about me. As I stated, from age 3 to 17, I was in foster care, group homes, shelters, you name it, I've been through it. But I always had a mindset that was, I have to fight for what I want to be one day. My life won't always be out of the control of myself one day. And as soon as it was in my control, I took full advantage of it. Some of what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, my journey was rough. It was hard, right? But now I only have things to smile about. I only have things to smile about. And I'm here to let everybody in this room know that that is a choice, right? Raise your hand if you've been mad in the last week or two. You've been upset, right, right? Now put your hand down, right? And I wanna make this challenge to everybody at these tables. The next time someone asks you when's the last time you've been mad, I want you to not be able to remember. I can't remember when I was mad. When was I upset? I don't know, I don't know, right? And you, some of you guys looking at me you're like, what is he talking about? I get mad all the time. I'm always gonna get mad. It's a choice, it's a choice. It's literally a choice. So what would you be 
If you did not know what you could be, think about that. Legacy. That's what I'm talking about today. Legacy is very, very important to me. It's why I work as hard as I do. It's why I so into so many people. Because your legacy is what you are when you're not here anymore. Your legacy is what you could be. Everyone in this room is a work in progress. And guess what? You'll die a work in progress. But your legacy will live on. What is that legacy? If you're not pouring something into what you will be remembered for every single day, then you will not have a great legacy, right? You can go to work every day, you can go home to your family every day, and you can go through the motions, right? You can do just enough to get your paycheck. You can do just enough to get an I love you or a thank you, right? But we all know people that when they leave this earth, their absence is felt. We all know people right now that if there, if there was a void that became that person, their absence would be felt. I challenge everybody in this room to make sure, because we all gonna go one day, and I'm not gonna get too morbid, but make sure you are creating a space around you, around the people around you that say, what would I do without that guy or girl? What would I do if I didn't have that person in my life? Make sure, because I haven't figured life out, none of us, none of us will, right? But what I have figured out is what makes me happy. And I believe that happiness is the key to life. I believe that if you do the things that make you happy all the time, your hand won't go up when you're asked when the last time you were mad, right? Because you always do what makes you happy. You're always around the people that make you happy. Now, being in the foster care system for me was a plus and a minus because you know one thing it taught me? It taught me that I don't need people. Right? But it also told me that I do need people. And I'm explaining the two sides of that. Negative people will enter your life. People that don't do the things that you do, aren't interested in the things that you're interested in, and bring you down will enter your life. I don't care if they're a coworker, I don't care if they're your relationship, I don't care who they are, they'll enter your life. And sometimes for a small little benefit, you gotta put it on a scale. For a small little benefit, we hold on to those people. Why? For that little eighth that they give you, you can replace them with somebody that gives you a half or gives you a whole, right? Those people can be replaced. You don't need those people, right? You need the people like my guy Huey, who referred me through and through to a woman that didn't know me, that got me here today. It's all about your network. I've known Huey for a long time. He's seen my path. He's seen my trajectory. So he put in a good word. He's the type of person I need, right? I don't need the people that Michelle may have spoken to. I'm the same person. But there's somebody out there she could have spoken to that doesn't like the trajectory that I'm on. That's mad, that's a hater. That is saying, you know what, I wanna do what he's doing. Michelle, don't use him. Use that guy, he's terrible. Right, I don't need that person. They're not a cheerleader for me. And the thing about me is, my team will tell you I pour in constantly. It's all I do. I don't disadvantage, I don't talk down about. I'll get on your case if you're doing something wrong. My guy Vern just called me last night and he said, you know what, I'm thankful because when I do mess up, you tell me I messed up. I said, I'm, not, I'm never gonna be your yes man, Vern, because I'm gonna be great. Me personally, I'm going to be great. I'm going to have a legacy, I'm going to be talked about. So the people around me, they have one option, be great with me, that's it. Be great with me. And I'm not just gonna tell you to be great, I'm gonna teach you how. Zay, raise your hand. This is Zay. Do I teach you how? Do I talk to you constantly about how not? Exactly. So Zay's here because when I first started My New Philly, I know from being in the film world for a little while that the film industry and TV industry is severely depleted behind the scenes with women and especially women of color. So it was important to me to have women and women of color on my team, especially behind the scenes. And I just put a little tag out on Instagram. And I said, tag your favorite female videographer. I need some videographers on this team. 
Zay's name came up a million times. And now I call her PETA. Call her PETA. PETA is short for pain in the ass. Because <laughs> she's like a little sister to me. That nagging little sister. But she's talented. So I sew into her and I, and I keep making sure that she's being great. Because the thing about greatness and the thing about legacy is, it's yours. Greatness is yours. Your legacy is yours. The world is abundant. It's abundant with happiness. It's abundant with money. It's abundant with opportunity. But all of that, once again, is a choice. Think about this. Perspective, right? Any Eagles fans in the building? Any Dallas fans in the building? Put your hand, you better put your hand down you get rolled on up in Yang Ming. Start throwing some tables around Yang Ming. Got Dallas fans in the building. But perspective. <laughs> So we're watching the game, right? Perspective. Let's say, um, let's go with the Eagles team. Let's say Nelson Aguilar catches a pass, right? Bobbles it around a little bit. Looks like it hits the ground. Every Eagles fan is saying, oh no, that ball didn't touch the ground. It's touched down. It's your perspective, you're an Eagles fan. But every Dallas fan, just many of them, is saying, no, that ball hit the ground, right? Everyone on the 40-yard line is saying, oh no, clearly hit, hit the ground. Hit the ground, clear. But everyone on the end zone is saying, I don't know. I don't know if it hit the ground. It's perspective. There's one right answer. They're gonna review the play. They're gonna watch it on tape. Your perspective doesn't matter. There's one right answer. But everyone has a different perspective. There's one right answer. But guess what? Life ain't on tape. You can't rewind it and, and see what you did, what you did wrong. You can't go back. You can't fix it. But you can operate within your perspective. If your perspective is on, there's no abundance for me. Huey Dillon has Philly chit chat. I can never take photos and be as great as Huey Dillon. Michelle Leonard's one of the best realtors ever. I can never be as good as her, but if I could be half as good as her, I'd be okay. Kyrie Terrell is rising in the media world, but I can only be half as good as Kyrie Terrell. People tell me all the time, well, you the next Tyler Perry. Well, you the next Spike Lee. I say, no, I'm first Kyrie Terrell. That's what I am. Because my greatness and my success will never be judged by another human being, right? I don't get, I don't get fame shocked or, or what they call it, celebrity you know, allure, right? And I'm not saying it's not okay. I'd, I'd love to meet Oprah one of my favorites, right? Media mogul. I'd love to meet Tyler. But my heart won't beat fast when I meet them because they're a human being. They simply took advantage of their opportunities, that's all. It's the only difference between us and them. They got up a little early, they worked a little harder. Anybody at any of these tables in here can be as great or greater, if that's your perspective. But the power of perspective is huge. And if you're not thinking about it consciously, if you're not saying, why am I saying these things to myself? Why am I not talking me up all the time? Why am I not saying that I can do it rather than I'm, I'm telling people I can't? I can never do that. They're, they're too good at that. Now I'm not saying you're gonna be Michael Jordan and been basketball and you're 43 years old. <laughs> but I am saying that whatever you're good at, be the best at it. If not, why do it, right? When, when I'm, I, I say this around the studio all the time. When I got one of these in my hand, this right here, this beloved device, I feel like Allen Iverson on the basketball court. Y'all remember Allen Iverson? Yeah. Undersized, led the league in scoring for years, took a, a bare bone Sixers team to the championship and only lost to the juggernaut Lakers with Shaq and Kobe. If they ain't have Kobe or they ain't have Shaq, we would've won that championship, I just want to talk about it. But they had Shaq and Kobe. But I feel like Allen Iverson on the basketball court when I had this in my hand. Because I'm disadvantaged, right? I'm self-taught. Nobody told me how to do this. I taught myself because I wanted to. I made the decision one day that I was gonna be a film director. And from that day, I just sold into that craft. And I didn't sew into that craft half-assed. I sold into that, that craft to a point where if I didn't know it, I studied it. 
if I heard a term that was unfamiliar to me that had to do with film, I studied it. I learned it. I made all my weaknesses my strengths. I say that to my team the whole, all, all the time. What can't you work in here? What device don't you know? Treat it like you bought it. Don't ask me because I know how to work it. Treat it like it's yours. There's a different perspective that comes along with that, right? We all buy things and we know somebody that has one, so we just call them. How do I work the so-and-so? But how many things have you bought that you've never called anyone because it was yours? Simply because it was yours. Think about that perspective. Simply because you bought it, you taught yourself how to work it. But because you know the news you got one, <laughs> you call Fanuja. Well, Fanuja, I just got the so and so, so and so. You got one, right? <laughs> Teach me how to work it. That's your perspective, right? We gotta fix those things. We gotta make our strengths weaknesses consistently. And then what we have to do is we have to put those upon other people. Every successful person is successful because they had a dream, they had a vision and they executed in that field and then they taught other people how to execute that field. And those people, if they're lucky, dominated that field again and then they taught people how to do that field. That's how it works, right? There's always more people at the bottom than there are at the top. And that's mainly because of perspective. I literally believe that everyone can have wild, unimaginable success, whatever success is to you. Some people go and be a firefighter. Some people go and be a cop. Some people go and be a teacher. You may look at that and say, well, they're not high paying jobs. But for these people, when they grew up and when they saw the lights ride by and when they saw people in danger or whatever it was, they wanted to do that thing. They wanted to save people. They wanted to teach people. They wanted to do, that's success for them. It's all about your target. Where are you, where are you going? What are you creating that's going to make people say, you know what? I could be like this person if I were to listen, if I were to follow. But then are you going to be that person that is unselfish in empowering them to be even better than you? That's the key. Unselfishness. Because no one, I read a book talked about Bobby Flay and how he started doing cookbooks for free and how people were like, Bob, why'd you, why'd you get secrets away? Why would you do that for free? And Bobby's answer was basically, you know, no one can cook like Bobby Flay. I can give you the recipe all you want, but I'm still Bobby Flay. You, you can't do it. Like and the most disrespectful thing in business is when we see someone else do something, and, the, and the, the, the crazy part is because I'm in media, people do it all the time. They see someone on TV, they see someone doing an interview, and they go, oh, I can do that. I get them walking my office all the time. Want to be a host. We put them on camera and it's like, yeah, you gonna be, um, you gotta, where's the broom? Where's the broom at? They, uh, you, got to work, you got to start from down there. But it's disrespectful for any craft, right? We got Serta Pro in here, right? You guys paint, right? If I was to see them do their job, paint the side of my house or something like that, and I was looking, I was to say, nah, man, you know what? I'm not gonna pay y'all that much. That's, I could do that. How? Do I know, do I possess the knowledge of what his day-to-day -day is? Have I went through the pitfalls that have gotten him to be a recognizable brand in that industry? You know how disrespectful it is for me to say, give me a paintbrush, watch this. It's disrespectful. And we do that constantly in business. We talk about how someone should do their jobs better or could do their jobs better. Or the most disrespectful one, I could do that better than them. Could you now? I'd love to put you on that stage and let's see. I'd love for my guy to pass you a paintbrush and let's see. Because you're not there, right? And the worst thing of them all today is social media. Because social media has everyone judging other people's highlight films against your behind the scenes, right? People don't post their failures. They don't, they don't post their, their hard times. They don't post their arguments. They don't post their accidents. They post their triumphs. So now here you are scrolling along and you're like, man, the, the Joneses just keep winning. 
I'm, I'm tired of, what am I doing with my life that I'm not like the Joneses? They got a new car. The car ain't got no engine in it. You don't know that though. They got a nice house. It's not theirs. They just walked by and took a picture. Right, perspective. People show you what they want you to see. And social media has created this monster. It's the gift and the curse. It's how you use it. There's a book I read. I can't remember the name of the book. But they say to envision yourself on your last days. Right? Steve Jobs literally did this and wrote about it um, during his last days. Right? And he talked about the things you think about when you know. Some of us aren't going to know. He knew that it was his last days. Right? The things you think about change when you know it's your last days, right? And what's important isn't important anymore, right? Me and my team, we run around here all day, every day, and we trying to cover the best and the brightest in Philadelphia and all of those types of things. But if one of us was on our last days, none of that would matter anymore. But it's the number one thing we wake up and think about right now, right? So the challenge in that is to consciously understand that you will get there one day, right? But where do you want to be when that day comes? Now, if you're not thinking about that consciously, then you're just living day to day. You're going through your day, you're going through the motions, and next thing you know, 10 years go by and you're in the exact same spot you were 10 years ago because you were not consciously thinking about your legacy. So as I bring that piece of, of my talk to a close, think about what would you be if you knew what you could be? Anybody here know what they could be? And before you, before you answer, the answer I'm looking for is who you could be if you did get up a little earlier, right? Look in the mirror right now. Everybody looking in the mirror right now. If you did finish things on time, if you did follow up, if you did call people back, if you did what you said you were going to do, right? Does anybody know who you could be? If you did those things today, um, I hope you guys donate to the cause. I hope you check out MyNewPhilly.com and refer MyNewPhilly.com. We also come on TV on Comcast and Verizon on the weekends. It was Thursday and Sunday. Um, 6 and 9, 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. 6 o'clock on Thursdays, um, 9 a.m. on Sunday. It was Saturday or Sunday, but y'all check it out. <laughs> we on there one of those days. Um, Michelle, I can't thank you enough. Oh, well, thank I can't you. Thank you enough. And actually, here's a here's. small gift card from Yang Ning to you. Oh, thank and you. This, this, this is for Delta, though. It's no, not for me. That's for you. Okay. This one is for Jasmine. Okay, cool, okay. cool. Jasmine, you get to come back, girl. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. I guess I got to put this down so y'all can eat, right? Because, you know, I can talk all day. I can take y'all to 4 o'clock if y'all want to. <laughs> Did you want to? Oh, Mike, well, are you just done? Oh, for Nusha, I'll tell you about next week. Yes. Kyrie, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Talk, welcome. Really. Um,